Alright YouTube, what is going on? It is Bigfoot here today bringing you a second series of Airline Tycoon Deluxe Edition. Welcome back to another series of this great game. I've done a series on this game before doing Falcon Lines and it went down really really well. The most viewed video on my channel has about 5,000 views and that is on this game. And the series as well was pulling in numbers that Transport Fever does. So it was always sort of a secondary series, but it pulled in the numbers of a primary series. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and record another series on a few different points. One, I want to try a different airline and a different strategy. Two, I enjoy the game a lot. Three, I can mass record it because there's not too much input in terms of feedback, which is a good and a bad thing. But I think it's a really, really good game nonetheless. And then four, I think that it's a really good game to watch and it's a, it's a real like blast from the past for a lot of people. A lot of people have played this game previously and I just want to try and do it a little bit different this time. So that's what we're going to do. So before we actually jump into it, I've changed my home airport to Singapore. The reason is because I want to have a different challenge and try a different part of the world. Previously, I had London and... London was good for Europe, but I didn't really get to explore much of Asia and we're going to go for the Asian game this time. Pro plus, I mean, we'll probably will have Pacific and Atlantic routes as well, or at least into Europe anyway. So let's go ahead and select free game. And this is where we have our choice. And this choice is, I think, I mean, we've been Falcon Lines, so we're not going to go Falcon Lines. I'm thinking Phoenix Travel. So let's give this a go. I don't really know the strategy of this airline specifically anyway, but I'm quite excited to see how this works out. From what I remember, Phoenix Travel, like the AI itself, buys a lot of planes, so... I really know how Sunshine and Honey work, but I don't know how Falcon works, because I was Falcon last time. Anyway, let's listen into this meeting. My airport, so mind what you're doing. Okay, that's all I wanted to say. We will meet tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Well, that wasn't exactly a thorough meeting, was it? But I sort of know, I mean, the meetings are always the same. It's just talking about sabotage. So we're here in Singapore. So we've got two flights to Singapore and Manila. So first of all, let me actually get my basics back again. So I need to work out how big the planes are. So you're a 180 seater and then you should be a 90 seater or 126 seater. Okay, so that's quite interesting. What we'll do is we'll get the flights in for here today just going back and forth so you are oh that needs to go today can you go forward an hour yeah you can right so that will work just and no more so if we make that work so that's going to make us sixty thousand on today's flight and then the next one it's going to make us sixty thousand as well and we lose eighteen thousand on the return so it's not too bad at all so let me really just explain everything to you Basically, we have two aircraft. We want to go ahead and fill the schedule, which is just the schedule planner up. Though the planes have got different distances they can fly. As I said, they've got different seats as well. They've got, I mean, this can have 180 passengers, 30 of them being first class. I think that's how it works anyway. And it also requires staff such as pilots and attendants and so on and so forth. And we'll go ahead and look at the other stuff in a minute. What I want to do is I'm just going to rename this plane because I don't really like the name of it, to be honest. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to name it the 180 Air Fert, just because I want to know how many seats it's got. And I think that's a, I think that's just a tactical move anyway. And then this is our Kessel. This is a 126 seater. So we might have actually made less money, but I mean, both those planes only have bracket 90. If you can see where my mouse is, so that means it only had 90 people traveling. So it's probably actually better I use my smaller plane for these flights. Anyway, let's quickly rename this and then let's go ahead and fill up the rest of our schedule because that is the biggest thing which we need to start off with. So that'll be the 126 KSL and that is those two renamed. Again, I think they're German cities, Erfurt and Kassel, though I really don't think that's how you pronounce it, but this isn't language school. Interesting office compared to Phoenix Travel, actually. We've got Russian dolls on the desk, which is kind of cool. But let's go ahead and look at the mail. So, welcome to Airline Tycoon. In close, you'll find the brochure How to Build a Successful Airline. I definitely don't need that because I'm a boss at this game. So let's go ahead and... 
Let's basically just run down to last minute travel and see what we can get. We can't get any more flights today for our 126 seater, but we can possibly get some flights for our 180 seater if it's not too far away. So let's have a look here. That's the wrong part of the world. However, it is very, very profitable. But at the same time, the time it would take to fly from here in Singapore to Las Vegas, I think the day would end. So that's not worth it. We can do Bangkok to Singapore and I will take that because Bangkok should only be maybe a two hour flight if that. That's European. That is too far away as well. That's European and Singapore to Perth. Now we can do that, but can we do that in time? I'm going to take it. The penalty is extremely high, but if for some reason I can't fit it in, I'll honestly just restart. That's how bad a person I am. So let's run back up to the office anyway and see what we can do. I realize I have the wrong mouse right now, which is kind of frustrating. So I'm very quickly just going to change that. I have a quieter mouse for recording just because I hate the sound of clicking. So what we're going to do is the Bangkok flight's going to go in there. You'll arrive back at Singapore. That's absolutely lovely. And then you will depart out hopefully tonight based on gates. You should be able to go in there. Now, see, so you can't. That's a big, big, big issue. Yeah, we can move you up to there. So that's fine. So we will be able to get that $435,000 and 104,000, so that's a lot of profits already actually, which is great to see. So now we just need to start planning from Tuesday onwards, which is a lot more easier, and we can maybe already start to think about going for a route as well. However, the demand needs to be there, and it's... See, that's the thing, demand is very, very difficult, because I don't really know the strong points really coming out of here. So from Singapore, we have various destinations that we can fly to directly. So if we filter through to Singapore, we've got Manila, which is Philippines, which... How busy is this route? Well, first of all, the daily requirements is... It's not overly high. If you look at over here where my mouse is, you can see the daily requirements and the current requirements. If the current requirements outmeet the daily requirements, then that's good. And the rent for that isn't too bad. It's not exactly a very long distance, so that's a very much acceptable one. Then we've got the other ones, which are to Bangkok. This one is, again, not too bad. The male one is not very appealing at all. And then you've got the Perth one, which is interestingly low as well. I thought that would be quite high. Then I think we should have Sydney as well, which is quite appetizing. I just want to go ahead and try and refresh myself at this game. So previously I would have done London to New York. So if we look for London to New York, then those were the figures and I had four planes running that non-stop. So I think it's a little bit early game to jump into a scheduled charter route. But that's definitely where the later game is and that's definitely something I'm going to be doing. So let's go ahead and run downstairs and let's just go ahead and see what the other airlines have got in action today. So it looks like me and uh, Falcon Lines are actually the busy of the two. And if we go ahead and bring up this bad boy, then we can really see what's going on so far. And honestly, there's nothing here at day one. So we need to start to plan travel further on throughout the week. And then I want to do some advertising as well, because I know advertising is a really big thing. So Melbourne to Singapore, that flight is definitely doable and I think we might take that. Today is Monday, so Singapore to Melbourne, we can fly that at the night and then we can fly that back the... So fly that out Tuesday night, bring that back Wednesday morning, that's fine. Singapore to Hong Kong, again that's quite appetizing and that can go earlier on in the day in Tuesday, so that will work. Thursday, Bangkok, Singapore, we can do but 47,000. That is really not worth it at all. Then we've got two of these, which is Delhi to Singapore and... Oh, I don't really know, to be honest. We can't, I don't think physically we can fit the Tuesday one into our schedule. The Until Friday one isn't actually that much. However, we'll take it anyway, just because right now we're sort of just trying to fill gaps, to be honest. We don't have a... It's more we're going to have to go down to the cargo hall and I need to see what kind of cargo actually our planes can hold because it is sort of just filling gaps and seeing where we can go from here. So the planes, the Cassel cannot fly any of them. Well, that is not good at all. So we've got four flights to put onto the 180, which is manageable, don't get me wrong. This is going to be going to Hong Kong. 
Now that is a long flight, but it only loses me 32,000 and then again 318,000, so that's good. Then we're going to be flying from Singapore out to Melbourne, which is fine. Then I want to fly on the Wednesday from Melbourne to Singapore. And then we need to fly from Delhi, which Delhi's some flight away. That'll lose me 36,000. So I'm really not making a lot on that. I'm only making an 8,000 profit, but at the end of the day, I'm still making a profit, which is a good thing. In terms of the other Delhi flight, I can pick it up actually, because we have really not got much at all going on here on this 126 seater. So basically from Tuesday, we're free on this flight. So last minute might have some stuff in already for tomorrow actually. I think that we should be able to, and I think I'm going to go down to the cargo hold as well. That one's quite good, a lot of profit and it's until Sunday. It does require the bigger plane however, but there's no penalty. So any flights with no penalty, you might as well take. Singapore to Melbourne again, that looks like it's going to be a very hot route. So that's maybe a chartered one that I want to pick up because I've already got like three flights going down to Melbourne anyway. Delhi it seems to be another one in Hong Kong, so these are maybe the big go-to airports. So this is the Tuesday one we were going to choose, and I think that we... I think we'll take that. I mean, that's a long flight to only have that much, you know that. I mean, that's going to be a six-hour flight just looking at the map over to Madagascar. That's not worth it. We'll take that one though, I think, and we can get that in tomorrow. So at this stage, it's a lot of running up and down the stairs and just filling in the schedule. But I will run along to last minute again, and I will also run along to... Why? I've got 90 seats. How can you not go in the other plane? What is the problem? Flight is too long. Distances, Callum. Distances. Right, that's bad because we've now lost money. Tell you what, can we not? No, you can't fly that distance, so that's the real problem. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Well, you can fly on Thursday, which is fine, back to Melbourne, and that'll make us a lot of money. This is the one which isn't going to have much of a problem, so you can go on anywhere. It's a long flight over there, which costs 190000 so... That is in Madagascar, so if we can get a plane which is maybe in another part of Africa going over there by any time, then that would be great, because that literally takes a day to do that flight. I mean, right now you actually are from Melbourne anyway, so it's an extremely long distance, so we, even if we can get it back to Singapore, that would be great. We're going to have to go ahead and miss that flight, because, I mean, the penalty isn't too bad, actually. Uh, that's just me just not looking at my facts again, so... What are the distances? The range here is, what, 6,400, which is good, and you are only 3,800, so that's where we need to watch out. The 90, I'm going to write this down because I know I'm going to forget, so it's the 90 or 126 seater, but can only go 3,800, which is something which I need to remember before I get more fines. Let's put it this way, thank God that wasn't a larger flight or a more penalty heavy flight because I could have really ruined my start game strategy. It really could have been a disaster. So that's 30,800 I'll put down just to be safe. So where are we looking here? So for example, that's too long. So this 90 seater really isn't gonna be able to do a lot on the basis that most, and it looks like near enough all these, the Hong Kong one isn't, it can do the Hong Kong, but it can't do that in terms of passengers. So that's really annoying. It can do that one to Bangkok, but it can't do it because of passengers, and that's too long. So if you understand what I'm saying here is that we do have major issues in terms of the distance of the smaller plane, and that makes me want to get rid of the smaller plane already, but I can't go ahead on the first day and start buying new planes. That's something I just cannot do at all. So that is a way out the way, that is too long and it's not that profitable. That is doable, it should be actually doable for the smaller plane, I think. And the smaller plane's not going to be doing much, is it? That flight there, Seoul, Singapore, is out of distance for the smaller plane. But at 40 tons, I need to just double check my plane's capacities, to be honest with you, because I'm not really at all sure. So. We'll exit out and we'll go find that out right now. And from there, I guess we can pretty much just call it a day actually because we're pretty much set for tomorrow. 
just the way this airport is in this part of the world, there's probably only about two or three different airports that are in the small radius for the smaller plane, the 126 seater. So this is going to cause me real problems, real problems. But all the other airlines should have similar problems as well, though. So it's not the end of the world. So what are we looking for here? So I'm just going to write everything down here. So you're 180, you're 6.4, and you have a freight capacity of only 24 tons actually, which is interesting. I thought you had a lot more. I really did. And that means you're going to have even less yourself. Now the good thing is with freight is that you can do it over multiple flights. However, I'm just not going to jump into the freight industry because these two are specifically passenger flights anyway. So it's really, really just not worth it at all right now. And honestly, tomorrow, I think we're going to go ahead and have a look at a route. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to call it a day there because there's not really too much else going on right now to be honest. So we might as well go ahead and move forwards. I cancelled the briefing, day two, there's not going to be anything exciting at all. So we're up to 2 million which is really really nice to see. You're on the ground though, you're literally doing nothing which is a problem so I will go down to last minute for you. In terms of this here, uh, Thursday onwards we can fit stuff in and or we need to try and I guess just get the plane back to Singapore or over to Africa because that would be great so it looks like Falcon Lines has just been in here the green airline so that's why there is a lack of stuff on the board you're not worth it you are a long distance it's not a bad premium to be fair that's up to Japan and then Manila uh, the smaller plane can't do that, I can do it in distance, and the smaller plane is really going to struggle, you know that. So I think that's why I want to go for charters, I really think I do want to go for charters on that, because it's, uh, it's just so impractical, you know that, it really is. It's literally, I mean, right now it's wasting money. If a plane's on the ground, it is wasting money. I can't do that in terms of distance, I can't do that in terms of distance, I can actually. But... That's quite good, but we're busy, I think, on that day. Today, that's too far away. That's, let's be honest, it is way too far away. That's not a bad one, but again, it's too far away. Bangkok to Singapore today, I can do that one, and I will take that one. And today, I can also take that one too, which is good. So those are two short distances. I've inconveniently not chosen one of those two airlines, so I need to run a long way through the airport, which is very frustrating. I am close to some of like high tech and second class planes, which we might go plane shopping shortly actually. But I just want to get this plane off the ground to be honest, so we can go ahead and do something. Holy shit, that's not gonna- I can't get them both in, are you being serious? What's got a larger penalty? Larger penalty is the Hong Kong flight, so we're gonna do the Hong Kong flight. I just- Half the day's gone already, that's the problem, so that's another penalty taken which is really not good at all. And I already want to go ahead and get rid of that plane and upgrade because it's just causing me so many issues unfortunately. So what we'll do is we'll jump in here, I honestly just need a longer distance plane, I need a much further than 3800. I need probably, not even like 6000 would do, you're 25 million, so this isn't going to happen is it? If I was to go ahead and sell a plane, oh, sorry, then try the museum. Okay, you don't take them. So let's run down to the museum, which if I can remember, I think the key shortcut's M. You're not open until 11 o'clock, which is fair enough. So we'll run down here anyway, and we'll just see if there's any flights up for... Actually, no, 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 no. Let's go to air travel. I want to see what's going on here is there is anything basically up here which we can take on our smaller plane. So we can take that one on the smaller plane on Friday, which we will do. That one is... See, that's very, very good. That is very, very good, but it's on a Wednesday. That one's also on a Wednesday. Though, can I do that one? No, I can't. I need the bigger plane. I can do that one on Thursday. I can do that one, actually, and I think we'll take it because we might as well. Manila to Singapore we can't do, and Seoul to Singapore is too long a distance. So I think we should be good with those two there. I actually want to look at the flight board right now as well, and just double check and see how things are looking. Because we've got two flights in action tonight, one at 8 o'clock, and then one at 10 o'clock 
at night as well. I'm not even looking at the right airline. I'm still looking green for some reason. We're red now. So one at 12 o'clock midday and one at 10 o'clock tonight as well. So pretty close there. But let's go ahead and jump into the museum and really see what we have got in here. So if I want to go ahead and sell, do you buy used airplanes? Then if I was to go ahead and sell my smaller plane, then I would get a lot of money for it. The reason is because it is brand new. So that's interesting. That is very interesting indeed. So I would get what? 3.5 million basically. So what are the planes in the background? That's what I want to know. So your range is extremely good. Your price is 10 million though. So it's a little bit out of budget. Now this is a lot more appetizing. So you're 5 million. You need quite a lot of staff. Your consumption's actually quite high. So it would cost a lot, but... That means we could do a lot of flying with this plane because the range is insane and it can also carry a lot of passengers. Then we've got that 43 million, which is just not good at all. So I think we're going to have to just hold off on a new plane for a few days. I'm just going to see if we've got anything which is really worth it in here. I don't think there will be and there isn't. Peking to Singapore, we could do that one actually. 15 tons, I can carry 15 tons. And I can do it on Friday. Is the premium worth it though? I don't think it is. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave it for now. And we're going to return it back upstairs. So with that done, we're going to have to start looking at scheduled flights for the smaller plane. Because we've exhausted the option of trading in the plane basically. We can't go ahead and do that. So we're going to instead have to do something else. Because it's just not going to work out. So Thursday, you are on the move on Thursday. Which is good. Though that's a gate clash. It will move you up a tiny bit there you're going to be going to mail on the friday morning so right there we're making fifty six thousand, but the flight out there's 23 and then you're making only fourteen thousand, and the flight out there's twenty seven thousand. so this plane is just a disaster right now in terms of this year we've got double bookings today it's just a bit of a disaster though the good thing is we are up to what 2.4 million which is nice to see so what we need to do now, as I said, is go ahead and basically just explore a route for this plane because I think that's what we need to do. So let me just go ahead. So we are 126 passengers here. We could change that though. The freight is, what, 16 tons. I'm not going to be looking at freight routes anyway because that's just no point. Then you've got a range of 3,800. So that's interesting. So the possible destinations I'm looking at right now are probably... So we can do Manila, though I don't know about the numbers really on that route. Can we do Bangkok? We can do Bangkok, and I like the look of the numbers on that one. The numbers are really, really nice. The mail one, the numbers aren't there, and Perth, the numbers really aren't there. Sydney, the numbers are there actually, but the distance is too long. So it looks like what I'm going to go for is I'm going to go to Bangkok, which is going to be a really short flight actually, but I should be able to get a lot of them in. And I think it should be quite successful. So that's going to cost me 13000 per day, 400000 a month. However, you really, I mean, that is really, really cheap. When you break it down day by day, it is extremely cheap. So with that, let's go ahead and start to schedule this and let's see how profitable they are. So what we're going to do is we're going to start these as of tomorrow. Let me put that in front of there. And, I mean, we're going to do multiple of these a day. That's the bottom line. We just sort of need to going forward. Bangkok to Singapore. Now, per flight, we're going to be making... It depends, really. We need to attract people to this, and we'll basically go into that in a second. So this is back in Singapore. Now, mail is not closer to Singapore, so we should be able to get... We'll leave it like that, actually. We'll leave a few gaps even there. Oh, I remember the scheduling thing. It's just a bit annoying at times. You know what? We'll have to fill that up like Bangkok to Singapore and there, please. Right, there we go. That solves that issue. We need to put... Right, this is just annoying now. Get rid of you. Get rid of you. Right, you go back to there. That's what I want. So you're in Bangkok. Why don't we have another Singapore to Bangkok and there like that? So where are you going from? No, I need uh, Bangkok to Singapore. That's what I need like that. There we go. So move you up like so. 
and there we go so that's much 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 better and then you're not back in Singapore yet so not going to have like non-stop with this route there's going to be a lot on this route but it's not going to be non-stop if you understand what I'm saying we just need to see off the demand to be honest and I'm happy to still put scheduled flights in here on the bigger plane though we are just going to mainly be doing contracts just because it's worth it a lot more so what we need on the bigger plane is we need to fill up Friday plus this flight here needs to be done by the Sunday but it can really move around quite a lot to be honest so we need we still actually need a back end Thursday one to be honest which we'll have a look at in a second what we're going to do is we're going to jump into the advertising agency though and start to promote this route a little bit because I do want it to be successful. So what I want to do is I want to improve the image of one of my routes and that is this route here. Now I do want to go for quite a lot like a TV spot however I mean I, I would ideally like to go for the gigantic campaign but I just can't shed that amount of money at this current stage so we'll go with that and we'll come back tomorrow. What I also want to do though is just improve my general airlines image. So why don't we go for a spot, why don't we go for a movie, so that's 100,000. Very small margins but it will help out if I do this every single day and I know that from my last series. So let's very quickly jump into here before the day ends and let's see what we can do. So we're looking for Friday and Saturday mainly. So we can do that one and we can not do that one on the smaller plane. The premium's not that good on that one so I think we'll leave it. On Thursday, on Thursday night we are back in Singapore and we do need to fly and we can fly to Sydney so I think we will take that one. Manila on or until Monday we can do that and I think we will take that. Singapore to Osaka, um that premium's not really worth it is it and the Hong Kong one isn't really either so it's nothing really too appetizing in there to be honest right now one thing I will just check again is the freight terminal I just want to see if there's anything under 24 tons sometimes you get freight contracts which are like one ton and it's like diamonds for example which is very much worth it so I mean I can do that but again that I don't think that's really worth it 40 I can't do 30 I can't do I can do that one, Bermuda Frankfurt, in terms of distance, yeah we can do that one, but I mean it's just at the wrong side of the world if you know what I mean, and we can do that one as well, but that's just, it's not worth it, so what we're going to do I think is we're going to bank our losses and we're going to schedule these remaining flights in, and then we're going to call it quits for today, I think, and move on to tomorrow, because I think there's not really too much more we can do at this stage of the game anyway. So we jump back into here and then back into my flights that we need to fit in on the bigger plane at Singapore. We can fit that in by an hour. Holy shit. Thank God. I, for some reason I thought the plane was back in Singapore but it wasn't unfortunately. And then this until Monday. So Manila to Singapore. That's really not actually worth it. We really shouldn't have picked that up. You need to fly from Sydney to Manila. So what I'm thinking is we do a... Uh, hmm, now see this is annoying. At least you're back in Singapore which is good. What I'm thinking is maybe doing a Bangkok to... So you fly back from Sydney. You fly in there. 59, no that's not actually worth it. <laughs> Let's get rid of you. Let's stick you in there like that which is good. And then we are going to push you back a little bit actually. And that works out fine. So that means really we're just looking for... Sunday plus now onwards which is good so just got a wee piece of paper here because it's a lot of management this it's a lot of memorizing stuff and I fucked up once or twice already so I don't want to do that again right okay so call it quits and I really just want to see the profit of our scheduled route that's really what I want to see so I don't think there's much point in this meeting we are personnel 91% which is good Planes at 99%. Our image hasn't increased though. And we're not even first in the passenger numbers. That's disappointing. You know that. It is, but it's because this plane has literally been on the ground. So you made a whopping 2,000 profit. Passengers were at 68 slash zero. So that really means to me that there was 68 second class and no first class. The ticket prices could be lowered to fill that up though. And that's something which I think we'll look at in a second. 
I want to see what the return is as well because that will be interesting. In terms of overall, I think we lost money overnight, but that was just due to us having to pay penalties because I scheduled incorrectly. So let's jump into here and let's look at our smaller plane because this is what I want to upgrade. So I want to upgrade everything to two stars and that's going to cost quite a lot of money to be fair. So we'll go ahead and did that do that? How do you like up, do the upgrading? Do you not just hit OK? Yeah, I want to go for that. How do I accept it again? Though? That's the that's the strange thing. What are these M's again? Restore saved equipment, save current equipment. Yeah, so let's do that. Yeah? I think I have to leave it like that overnight if I can remember. The larger plane I'm not going to go for right now anyway. It doesn't really matter on if you're picking up contracts. But this should hopefully... If I hit OK, then hopefully that will do that automatically overnight, I think. So I think we should be good. That will make a huge difference to that route, it honestly will, which should hopefully start to bring in a little bit more money anyway. So you're only making 2000 as well, you've got one less passenger, so what I need to do, I feel anyway, is just lower the ticket prices, that's really what I need to do. So how do we do that? So that's a very good question. I think, I cannot remember, but I really do need to do it. It must be in here. If we hit the I, then there we go, that's it. So. In terms of first class, we literally might as well get rid of first class right now because there's going to be no one flying first class on that plane. What we're going to do is we're going to drop the ticket price of the... Yeah, let's go for dumping actually. So we're literally going to try and fill the plane instead just because I think that that would be much better. We'll maybe increase you a little bit. So maybe do like $200. I think that's the best idea. So let's change you to dumping, but have you at 200. So 200 is a much better price, I feel. So did you save? You did save. So the new ticket price is $200, so it's much, much cheaper than it once was. However, I'm looking to get more people flying with the airline, because that's going to help improve our image long term as well. We've spent quite a bit of money on the... The, up, the upgrades must have gone through, actually. Let me double check that because I've gone down quite a considerable amount of money. So yeah, so you are now two star, which is good. So that should hopefully really, really make a difference on that. What I want to do is I want to go to the advertising agency, but you're not quite open yet. So what we'll do is we'll jump into air travel one last time this episode. We're going to go ahead and see what is really going on. See if we can get any flights for Sunday onwards. That's very nice, but we're full until Sunday onwards. So until Wednesday, but that's just shit, to be honest. That flight's not that attractive. Friday, no good. Thursday, no good. And is this last minute? Because it seems like last minute, honestly. There's so many Thursday, Friday, which is very frustrating. So I literally cannot do anything there, unfortunately. And to be honest, I can't really do too much else today. We do have a lot of flights in action though. We've got Melbourne, uh, or coming in from Melbourne and coming in from Bangkok, and then also going out to Bangkok, two flights as well. So this is me starting to get my scheduled charter in action a little bit more, which is good. That's what I'm wanting to see. And hopefully I've made those corrective changes. I really just want to see if it's going to be profitable straight away. So what I am going to do is I am going to jump forward one more day just before I end this episode. And I just want to see if we are in the profit. So passenger numbers still second. Image is still at zero, which is annoying me because I did spend 200,000 on that. Good morning. Welcome. But yeah, I'll skip that. I, I, really, they're just, it's, it's nice once or twice. But trust me, when you've seen it like a thousand times, it's really just not worth it. How are you doing? So we can't actually see yesterday's profits or losses, can we? So that is very annoying. Uh, very annoying indeed. In terms of the other plane, the other plane is doing quite well. And we did make some money overnight. A good 300,000 all in all. How do you speed up this game again? Now, there is a way, but I cannot remember how to do it. It's not that button, that's for sure, because that is totally not it. Is it to do with the China dolls? That would be really smart if it was, actually, but it's not. Now I'm just confused. There's a way. Oh, I know. There we go. 
Right, so what time are we really requiring to wait until? So it should be very soon actually, and there we go. So we're making a loss on that right now, which is frustrating to say the least. What we will do though is I think we will start to fill up the scheduler a little bit more while we wait though. This is going to be a lot of focus on this for the time being to be honest, it just sort of needs to be. So what we're going to do right now anyways, I think we're going to do at least two flights a day doing this route. Just because I, I can see the demand going forward with our upgraded plane and all that, I, th I think we really need to go for it. In terms of, I mean, I, I, I'm still happy to pick up contracts, as I said, and we might go ahead and just fuck things up on that day, actually, as well, so it's not a perfect schedule. Now, I've done the wrong thing, though, so, yeah, it's a little bit busy on Monday and Tuesday, I guess you could say, but there are still gaps, and I'm happy to remove stuff as well, because these are never going to be set in stone at all. In terms of the... Yeah, we're going to jump down. We really need stuff for Sunday Plus, actually. So I'm going to go ahead and have a look at that now. You are also minus... We're up to 85 passengers on that plane, though, that, which is really, really good, and I'm liking that. However, I might dump the cost down lower again just to see if I can get more passengers on the flights. Let's go ahead and see what air travel has to offer. We're going to slow this down before this closes. So Sunday to Perth, we really should just take that just on the basis that I think our smaller plane can actually take that, plus it's no penalty, so we really might as well. Uh, Osaka until Tuesday, 108,000, don't fancy it. I fancy you, but you're on Friday, and it's not worth that penalty. This one, though, too, that is very good. See, this is what I mean by unique contract, so passengers too, that's a big thing. Now, that is the distance over to Singapore, which I can do, however, the penalty is extremely fierce. So I will take that, and we will do it, and I should be able to do it with my smaller plane anyway. So that means I've got two planes. I can fit that in, and I get 600,000 out of that. And that will be a big, big, big deal breaker when it comes to upgrading the smaller plane, because that's really what I want to do. So first of all, that's you're already actually going to mail that date, which is a little frustrating. What we're going to have to do is, can we fit you on the big one? We unfortunately cannot fit you on the big one, which is annoying. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to remove that and remove that. We're going to have to move you forward significantly and then place you in there like so. So that's going to make a lot of money, 574,000, taking away 27,000 and you're making 13,000. So two mail flights back to back, one's making 13,000 and the other's making 575,000, so that just really shows you right there. In terms of Sunday, what we're going to do is we're going to stick this flight in at the back end, and that will work out nicely. What I should probably do is I'm going to remove that flight there as well, actually, and we'll just move some of you guys up like so. So there's a little bit more of a gap, which I like the look of that, just that little bit better. So a few more gaps in there, and then Tuesday and Wednesday are pretty jam-packed. No scheduled flights tomorrow, interestingly, to Bangkok, though, so we'll not really get to see for a while, I guess, how this route is doing and if we are turning it around, because I really do want to turn it around and get it into the profit as soon as possible. And in the next episode, I'm going to do everything I can do to make it profitable. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of this first episode. I hope you have enjoyed it. Please leave a like rating. Go ahead and leave me your comments down below on the thoughts on this series. I am really going to record, pre-record most of this series, so do go ahead and leave some suggestions down below, but they might not be implemented for many, many episodes, so just be aware of that. Go ahead and check out my Twitter and my Patreon, all support is greatly appreciated, and I'll be back with another episode in a few days' time, so thank you very much for watching, my name is Bigfoot, and I'm out.